Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Review Channel, where it's been a while since I've had the team from Christopher Ward on. I had Jorg on last time, but on this upload, I'm very glad to welcome Will from uh, Christopher Ward. Thanks for joining us. Hello, no worries. Before we dive into this, Will, would you mind giving us a bit of background about yourself? Because this is the first time you've been on the channel. Sure. Uh, so yeah, my name is Will Brackfield. Uh, I am a watch designer at Christopher Ward. I've been here for just coming up to five years, trained as just a general product designer because at the time I had big interest in watches, but there weren't really, even when I was at uni, there weren't really that many UK British watch companies. So didn't really think it was an option. Studied for general product design, designed some some interesting things, some things to do with planes, some things to do with just general products, and finally kind of got the opportunity to design watches, which is, as I said, something I didn't ever think would be the case, but managed to get into it, and yeah, really, really love it. Yeah, and you've been part of a really exciting time, haven't you, Christopher Ward, with that GPHG award that you won for the Belcanto, and some amazing launches last year, like the 12. Been a bit of a roller coaster over the last couple of years, things are just starting to skyrocket which is it's a lot of fun yeah absolutely well w this is what what you're here for today we're talking about a new watch the c63 valor and this is a return to quartz chronographs which i think you've upgraded the movement so would you mind telling us a bit about the about the new launch we used to do a lot of quartz chronographs and we've kind of gone away from it a lot in the recent past but thought this was this watch was the perfect watch to bring it back but what uh the movement we'll be using in this watch is the etta g10 uh 212 which is a thermocompensated chronometer quartz chronograph we felt that this movement was was perfect for the watch being that the watch is part of our mod collection as i'm sure you know we we have a licensing agreement with with the mod uh, along with some other watch brands which means that we can design and sell watches uh with their bl blessing basically and we were trying to find a way to integrate a chronograph into into that line we have at the moment two streams to our uh, mod collection so we have the vintage kind of side of it so where the sandhurst the cranwell and the dartmouth sit and then we have a very very modern side of it so the uh, where the limpstone and the colchester sit and there kind of wasn't anything in between um so that's what this c63 valor is kind of meant to be it's kind of meant to be a modern take on a military watch but very usable for a wide amount of people and that uh, quartz chrono is kind of perfect for that is it the same case as the Sealanders, or have you had to re-engineer it to fit a quartz movement? No, so yeah, so we've had to re-engineer it. So it's the the thickness is slightly different, the proportions on it are slightly different, and then um, obviously you've got the the pushes on this one that the the regular Sealander don't have. So the case itself is is brand new, but with all the design codes that you get with with the light catch case, so the the different finishing and the very swelt looking side profile. It's a three register chronograph, and is it just available in the one reverse panda scheme? just available in, in the, the single color for now. We actually had a little bit of fun with the colors on the watch itself. So as you say, the main dial is is black with white subdials, but actually we integrate the colors of each of the services of the uh, the armed forces into the watch. So each subdial has a, a different colored hand. Uh, so it's just kind of like an addition of a, a small bit of color um, and a nod to those services just gives it a little bit of character. I presume it still fits the same bracelet system because on this one you've got the consort bracelet. So it, it could be swapped out to the beta bracelet. and Yeah, so uh, it's available also on a beta bracelet. So it's available the beta bracelet, the consort, and also a webbing strap. This uh, split second timing function. So what what is that complication on this watch? It allows you to basically, you are timing something like a regular chronograph. You can stop it and kind of take note of the time and then you press it again and it jumped back as if the chronograph was hand was running the entire time so it kind of keeps track of where the timing is and you can have the hand catch up to that and continue timing so it just kind of means that you don't have to stop the chronograph if you're trying to time intervals of something okay so not quite like a lap timer but it just allows you to pause the chronograph take take down the reading and then start it again and it jumps to where it would have gone if the chronograph was still written and that's all on the main the main second hand yes yeah yeah the central second and then what do the other what are the other dials the three dials that you've got on there 
Uh, so the subdials on the watch, there is a uh, a tenth of a second subdial. There is uh, the, a thirty minute counter for the chronograph, and then there's a running seconds at six. I know I'm going to get this question in the comment section, but as so much of the Christopher Ward line has now progressed to being mechanical movement. Why was the choice on this model to go with quartz instead of mechanical or automatic chronograph? And um, so for this one, it was kind of it was, it was there were two main reasons. One, the size. So I'm sure you know the mechanical chronographs in general are gigantic in terms of the thickness. They completely change how the watch wears. Often it becomes a bit of an acquired taste. You, you have to you have to really like chronographs to be able to wear some of these. As I was mentioning before, we wanted to integrate all the services. So the idea for this watch was it was the most mass market MOD watch we had done to date. It's for the, for the people that work in the back office. It's for the people that maybe don't need something that's kind of gigantic and, and very hard wearing. So we wanted to make it as wearable as possible. So the quartz chronograph does that also the flip side of it is this movement is a chron uh, is a chronometer so plus or minus 10 seconds per year so it's extremely accurate um so that again ties into the mod philosophy that needing the most precision timing instrument um and we felt that that kind of all tied together is enough reasons that we should go for this movement that timing and the fact that it's thermocompensated that brings it more in line with chronograph some like the Breitling Endurance immediately came to mind like a very very similar setup I believe it's if not the same a very similar movement which makes the price even more interesting on this one so what are the release prices going to be on this so this uh this will be our new entry point into into Christopher Ward so on a webbing uh it's 550 pounds and then um, slightly more if you want to go for the bracelet, either of the bracelet options. That's a really cool price point because that light catcher case is one of my absolute favorites across any brand. The way that you've machined that and how the, the quick release spring bars work. Because this is the first time this thinner case is we've seen this thinner case let's just go over the stats so it's a 39 millimeter case 11.5 millimeters in height and then a lug to lug of 45.8 and then it's 150 meters water resistance one of the highlights is indices are applied on there what was the thought process behind the way that the indices look on this model the rhodium applied indices and the numerals that we chose for the, the indexes, we spent a long time making sure that font was correct. So finding a font that suited the military aesthetic, but wasn't too bold or in your face. Um, and also something that you could make you could make applied indexes from. Um, obviously, some, some fonts lend themselves to, to machining, others don't. So we spent a long time trying to find that exact right set of numerals that we could use so we thought it was very important to have applied numerals on this versus just just a printed dial it gives that kind of, that extra level of quality feeling we, we've also fully fully polished those those numbers so you get that really nice light play as well as getting the the light play on the case you also get it on the dial and of course the hands because they're they're faceted just like every other set of christopher ward hands so that was the idea behind that and and none of them have been have been amputated at any of their corners each of the numbers are full numbers and where they're where you couldn't fit one in the 10 and the three and the six you've opted just to, to leave those off instead of kind of shoehorning them in absolutely so uh matt who helped on this design our junior designer was very very against cutting numerals uh he he really fought for it and i'm really glad he did because um the i i think the proportions are just right that so you're right, none of the numerals get cut, but the numerals feel big enough that they are they still really stand out. So I think it's kind of the perfect balance. Yeah, it's got a beautiful symmetry where it's divided. It, it almost goes from the top to the bottom, from the 12 down through almost half of the, the Christopher Ward logo and then right down to the six. Yeah, it would have looked a little bit off, I think, if you'd shoehorned a six in there. That's that's something we try and do a lot is is get that symmetry, even if things aren't exactly the same on either side. Having the visual weight be the same is kind of very important for for our design aesthetic. Will, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through the the new model. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews. Thanks, guys. Bye.